What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Owner's Box YouTube channel. Post NFL Draft today, I've got three rookie sleepers for you in your Dynasty rookie drafts. I know there's gonna be coming up this week throughout the next couple weeks. Let me know in the comments when your rookie drafts are. Happy to help out with get you as much information as I can. I know from this draft class, you know, it wasn't ideal for some of the landing spots, for especially some of these pass catchers. We all know about the quarterback position and how things kind of played out there throughout the draft. Some very eye-popping stuff in terms of draft capital spent uh, on that position in the draft. So makes things really interesting for your rookie drafts. Let me know if you're in super flex, 1QB, what it might be. But for this video, uh, I do have a quarterback in here. He'd definitely be somebody to be looking at in my super flex leagues, which is usually what my dynasty leagues are in. But before we get into the three players, I want to talk about three things that I value most when I'm looking at players post NFL draft and how I'm evaluating them in terms of fantasy value for your teams. So the first thing to me, the number one thing is talent. As talented as a player is, if they are talented enough, they are going to find a way to get enough of a share of the offense and earn their opportunity. Whether there's competition, how good that competition is in front of them, how far behind they are in the depth chart, if they are talented enough, they're going to find a way to demand volume in the offense. Second, team. To me, I'm valuing team and the team that they're playing for, where they land as something more important than my third thing, which is draft capital, which is still important to me. Don't get me wrong, draft capital has an impact on fantasy value for these players and for these rookies. But to me, the team that they are playing for and the situation that they're coming into is crucial, not just for quarterbacks, for wide receivers and running backs especially. If there's a way that they're carving out an, a clear RB2 role with one of my guys here today, or you see a path for a wide receiver to earn serious volume immediately in the offense because of where they landed, that's huge to me. That's what the Amon Ross St. Brown, St. Brown situation was last year. Last thing, like I mentioned, draft capital is my third, still important. We're looking at Amon Ross St. Brown with Jamison Williams as a guy they didn't invest a lot of draft capital in as Amon Ross was a fourth round pick. They bring in Jamison Williams, trading up for him in the first round. That's impactful. We now know, you know, spending that kind of draft capital on Jamison Williams really means something in terms of what his outlook is in fantasy football. So if you guys do want to see my full rookie rankings, make sure to look down below in the description. You can check out my article. I've ranked the top 48 I have in Superflex Dynasty Leagues heading into 2022. Let's get to my three players for today. The first one, Isaiah Spiller of the Los Angeles Chargers. If you were here in my last video when we talked about players to sell before the NFL draft, I had Austin Eckler because I knew that this team was going to be looking to address the running back position in the draft. And they did it in a really big way, a way that they really sacrificed other positions of need for this team in order to get a running back, in order to get their RB2. And Isaiah Spiller is the type of player that can play all three downs. He's someone that will, if Austin Eckler goes down with injury, which he didn't do in 2021, but he's done in previous seasons, Spiller is locked, loaded, ready to go to step in as the RB1 and claim all three downs in this offense. We're looking at the cast in that RB2 role or competing with him for that RB2 role. Joshua Kelly, Larry Roundtree, they have been pedestrian to say the least for the Chargers in years past. Kelly's been with the team for uh, two years now, Roundtree for one, and they're averaging combined like three yards per carry uh, in their career. So those two guys, I think he'll easily be able to surpass because he's also been a quality pass blocker, which is something important for rookies in order to get onto the field and earn some opportunities and earn some reps. At a and they didn't have a ton of highly skilled pass catching options at wide receiver and tight end. Spiller got some good opportunities as a pass catcher, running routes not just out of the backfield, but out wide as well. I'm really excited about his value in fantasy football and in dynasty leagues. Eckler, like I said, I think value peaked just before the draft here, and we're seeing good capital. The fourth round is nothing to, you know, to sneeze at in terms of capital invested by the Chargers. I like his vision, his patience, what he lacks in footwork, he makes up for in those areas. And I like his physicality and he's definitely not someone that's afraid to run down the middle of the field and run inside and get after contact. Good frame, six foot, 217 pounds. I'm drafting Isaiah Spiller probably in the first round, to be honest with you. If you're in the back of the first and you're a guy that has a well-built team in dynasty leagues, you're, you know, you were competing for a championship this past year. Spiller's a great guy that I think has some upside for you. Next up, we're going to the wide receiver position. I really like John Mechie. Uh, it's a tough situation, of course, with the ACL surgery, tearing his ACL in the SEC championship game. If you do not know, second round pick by the Houston Texans. So some good draft capital for the kid. I, I think Mechie is a player that can 
for a lot of people, if you're if you're talking to someone about John Mechie and his outlook in fantasy football, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. You can talk about the fact he didn't really have that true um, dominance in college football with the Alabama Crimson Tide, but we're talking about Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith, those were all guys he was competing with in the offense. It came in at a time where he where he entered college football behind those guys. So he had a lot uh, of really high quality college football players and eventually NFL players that he had to compete with. And when he was on the field, he's he's someone I really liked from a burst and acceleration standpoint of that first step in getting off the line, especially in press coverage. There are some of these guys in this, this draft class that from watching their film, I really struggled to see how they'd be able to make those types of things happen at the NFL level. I'm talking about David Bell, or I'm really talking about Jahan Dotson, who I have trouble seeing uh, being successful with the commanders, but that's, that's a conversation for another day. So I really like that about Mechie. The ACL surgery, look, at this point, it, ACL surgeries are like having your first hangover. Sure, it's a tough time the next day. And for, for Mechie, he's got a, a recovery process that's going to last a number of months and it has been go- ongoing since December. But he's going to bounce back just like I bounced back from a hangover and I'll have some more drinks the next weekend. John Mechie's not going to be afraid to run, cut in his brakes, show us that acceleration and burst we were excited about. So no problem drafting John Mechie. I, I see him as a second round guy in your in your rookie drafts. And I'm looking at the Texans depth chart and Mechie has an opportunity to claim a good role in this offense. Brandon Cooks is always going to be there. You know, um, Nico Collins, third round pick last year. He was up and down. I didn't see a lot of things I really loved from him. Um, I think Mechie as a second round pick is going to earn an opportunity to run out wide, get involved in the slot. He's not the most physical pass catcher, but I really like his acceleration, his burst and his speed. So I'm not afraid to get him. And especially the team that he's, he's going to is beneficial for you guys too. The last one I mentioned, I'm not going to forget about the quarterback position. It was a tough year for quarterbacks. So um, if you're, if you're looking to get in on a quarterback, you're looking for someone with some upside, you're not looking to invest in Kenny Pickett, who really, to me is a, uh, we we had Ian Wharton on the show or a few months ago, and the upside is really t- Ryan Tannehill, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins. You want someone that you're willing to take a chance on that you kind of think can play in year one. For me, it's Matt Corral, the Panthers third round pick. I really think the, the point of the QB class being disappointing, Corral is a guy with an opportunity in Carolina to potentially get a chance to play this season. We've seen what Sam Darnold and PJ Walker have done in Carolina for Matt Rule. It has been very, very poor, very bad. They're going to be willing to give this kid a chance because he's very experienced at the college level playing under Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, Sh- showed some great progression. He went from 14 interceptions in 2020 to five in 2021. He's doing a good job taking care of the ball, which will be important to give him that initial opportunity in year one. Doesn't have crazy, ridiculous arm strength, but very quick passer that will be able to get the ball out uh, is I just really like what he can do. I don't see him as like a really high ceiling guy, but he does show that he is willing to run the ball a little bit as well. He's not going to run the ball like a, I would probably see like a Justin Herbert type of comp where he'll he'll use his legs when he needs to because he doesn't have the frame to really deal with physicality. But I, I think later in your drafts, I mean, in, in my Superflex rookie drafts, we're looking at that end of second, early third type pick just being that I don't think people have a lot of high hopes for him at the position, just with the draft capital invested on, on all of these guys. So I would, I'd be looking to get Matt Corral. I still think there's some value for him. And especially if you're looking for someone that could potentially fill in and play right away, as opposed to the Malik Willis, Desmond Ritter side of things, who I, I don't know what to expect in year one. So Corral's a guy that I'd be willing to look at. Those are my three favorite rookie sleepers for your rookie drafts in Dynasty Fantasy Football. That's Matt Corral, that's John Mechie, and Isaiah Spiller. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll have content out on the NFL and fantasy football every week going forward. Let me know what else you want to see on the channel. Other Dynasty Fantasy Football content. Happy to get it to you. And again, rankings are down below in the description. So definitely go check those out. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.